before I leave, it, it's this. It's really hard to be a teenager. It's really hard to get respect. And as some of you read on your papers and the questions I asked you, it had to do with how do you as a teenager get respect from adults? Because a lot of times we as teenagers are new teenagers and I was there once. So I'm still young. I'm not supposed to be as some really young guy that has, you know, I'm stupid as well. But, so we all can get lumped to that 25 and under kind of category. But how do you get adults to view you, your parents to view you, your teachers, you know, your friends, parents? How do they view you as someone who earns the respect and is to be respected? And I think when you look at this verse, the first Timothy 4 12, we kind of see an example and we see the model of how we are to be as teenagers and how you are to act and live, and this is the way you're supposed to be. This is the New Living Translation, this is what it says. It says, Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. And it says, be an example to all believers in what you teach. Be, a, be an example to all believers in what you teach, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and your purity. And it gives us these one, two, three, four, five, six areas for you as a young person that if you live right in these areas, you know what? This is how you don't let anyone think of you less just because you're 14 or 15. Now, why did Paul write this? It's called 1 Timothy for a reason. Because Paul is writing to a young pastor, and he has his first church, and he's having a lot of problems with the church. This guy has a lot of stomach problems. He gets a little nervous. And he's saying, you know what? I don't care if you're 25 or if you're 30 or however old Timothy was at this point. Paul's an old man talking to him. This is how, in front of everybody else in your church, when they look at you, they're not going to say, here comes this young, stupid kid that doesn't know what he's doing. This is how you do it. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are a young person. Because you as a teenager, and David says this every single <coughs> time, that you are the most talented group. This group has more potential than, than any other group in, in our church. Right. I mean, you get to an older people, they can't do the things that you do. They can make have your part. But you can't load a, you know, a plane of 30 you know, elderly people and take them to some poor country where they sweat to death and it's just all this work. Only you can do that. God uses you as a teenager because you are extremely talented in the music that you know, that you've learned, that you can play, in the way that you communicate, the technology, the knowledge, and everything that you, you can do. God says, you're special because you have the youth, you have the knowledge. Don't let anyone put you down because you are a teenager. You know, you are respected in our church. Why do you think that they're building a million dollar building over here just to have fun? So Jeff, you find the ladder and fall out the back of the door, though. It's there because they say, you know what, the teens and the youth of our church and our tri-state, they are very, very important. And I think our church is pretty good about not thinking too less of you, because they've seen what you can do. And there's a group now in Costa Rica, about 30, that are doing some amazing things. It's Wednesday night, it's Wednesday there, and they've been there, they've been acclimated now, and the, kind of the shock is over with, and now they're getting part of the work. They're going to do some really amazing, amazing things. Look at 1 Timothy 4, 12. And it says, Don't let anyone think of you less because you are younger. Be an example. This word example, I thought was really interesting when I read this. And I was studying for this. You take the word example, and it's found somewhere else in the Bible as well. The Bible, the New Testament, is originally written in the Greek language 2,000 years ago. Okay, And this word in the Greek is found somewhere else. And it's talking about... When Jesus had his hands pierced by the nail, and it made an impression in his hand. And forever, the Bible tells us, when you see Jesus, when he has the nail scars, you see that, it's the impression of the nail being there. And it's the exact same word used, example. What he is saying is that when you are interacting with these other people and adults, and people in the church, and people everywhere else, you are to leave an impression on them so deep that it goes through them, that they never forget about it, that it scars them forever. That is how you make, that is how you do not allow anyone to think less of you because of your young. So the first thing I thought of when I thought about being an impression for somebody else, I thought of Plato. Because Plato is very moldable, and by the way, everyone in this room is like this. Every one of you is very moldable. And you can have someone give an impression to you, and that's the way you are. It's just how everyone, everyone in the world is like that, okay? But not everyone, not everyone is, is the person who is a stand. I didn't have a stand. I figured there's no fist. It's better. 
Only a few people are those who actually make an impression on other people. And that's what he's talking about. And in these six areas, he says, this is your life. I've only got five people. I've only got five, five, so forgive me. In these six areas, this is what you need to do. And the first is the way you talk. Now, some translations say teach. I kind of did a little interpreting to say the way you talk. Some of the questions that some of the answers my group had was, okay, when you go to the pool tomorrow, how are you going to set an example to those people around you that there's something different about this teenager that earns respect? The first thing is going to be the way you talk. And I've, I have heard some of you talk, and I've heard sometimes the way I talk, and it's not too good. How are you going to set an example for somebody else in, in the speech that comes out of your mouth? Let me have a volunteer. Jake, please. Jake is someone very impressionable. Here he is, he's just an orange bush, and he's just kind of like, you know, a rolled up ball, you know, it's very you know, moldable. I come to Jake, and the way I'm talking to him is really inappropriate. And what you'll see a lot of times in churches is the way you backstab other people. You know, you gossip about somebody. You know how it is, trust me. Okay. In middle school and high school, it's horrible. Okay, you know, you talk about other people all the time. And if I go up to Jake and I just give him the ball. Hold the ball up for me. If I come over to Jake, and my impression for Jake is is really bad. And the way I talk is really bad. What's the impression left in the, in the ball there? It's three fingers. It's a fist. Exactly what my fist is, when you put it on my face, that's the impression that I leave. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, you are going to leave an impression on somebody by the way that you talk. What comes out of your mouth. Jake can do the same thing to me. The way I'm impressionable, Jake comes up to me, but Jake says something good, and everything that he says is positive, it's edifying, and it helps you, it helps you build us up as a body, as a group, and it gives the impression of hands must that yeah. This over here. And he gives the impression that's really good. I am impacted. And the way that I'm changed is dramatic. The way this looks, the way it's shaped is completely different than what it was earlier. And you can make it, I had the question, what's the coolest thing you ever made with play though? You know, this is a stupid question. You're very moldable, and what you mold the shape into is very important with your speech. So that's the orange color. The second thing it talks about is life. That's the blue color. And that's the way you live. Each one of you have lived a way today that you don't even know it. You don't even realize it. But you have made an impression on somebody today. Which is one of the questions. When's the last time that you impacted somebody else with your life? And somebody, you know, my group couldn't have really have any answers. Some of you may have had answers. I don't know. But without realizing it, today you have impacted somebody. With you being here tonight, or somebody you've talked to, or somebody you've interacted with, or you went to the mall with today, or went to the movies with last night, I don't know who it was, but you have impacted somebody this week, and especially today, you have done it. And again, you take the multiple Plato, and the way you live leaves an impression on somebody else, and it's good or it's positive, and it does not ever stay the same. It's not how it was originally. It's different. The way you live as a teenager. Not just the way you talk, but how you go about every day. And this includes the way you dress, the music you listen to, the movies you watch, everything. How your MySpace looks. It, it encompasses everything. If you got junk in all these other areas, you know what people are going to think, the impression that you leave, it's not a good one. And the way your life leads is also probably one of the best witnessing tools. Some of you will never talk to anybody about Christ ever. You might say, Michael, straight me back, you know, Christian answer, and you tell me about Jesus, you know, you'll never do it. But in a way that you don't realize by the way you live every day, you're telling somebody else about Christ. Now, is it positive or is it negative? Is it, I can't believe that person's a Christian? I can't believe. You know, one thing that I witnessed to a lady in the day at the gym, she's the, the owner of the gym. And the biggest beef she had with Christianity was like, you know, there's this guy, he says he's a Christian, he's not, he, she points to him, she said he does all these things, but yet he calls himself a Christian. And that was, her, I could, we could not hurdle that, the entire conversation, because she kept going back to that. Because one guy's life made an impression on her that will forever change the way she views 